more coverage you can count on. It's the KFOX 14 Morning News. Terror in the town of West Texas. An explosion at a fertilizer plant does unspeakable damage. And at this hour, the scene remains chaotic. Multiple deaths are being confirmed, and the death toll is certain to rise. Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephanie Guadian. And I'm Shelton Dots. And this blast was so strong, it was felt as far away as Dallas. Brad Montgomery has a look at some of the data recording the blast intensity. Brad? Yeah, that's right, Sheldon. Very intense blast with its explosion. Let's take a look at KFOX early warning storm track Doppler right now. I have the blast there. There's West Texas right there where that little, you can see that little lightning bolt sign there. 2.1 is what it registered by the USGS, and it was felt again in Dallas, Texas, which is some 70 miles away. Very amazing. A lot of people felt it in the southern part of the Metroplex. Very intense blast there. And this morning, they have another issue, a cold front on the way. The front that pushed through here, firing off a line of storms, and you can see those storms just off to their west. And once that pushes through, areas that have been evacuated, they may have to actually evacuate more people because that may switch the winds around and blow some pollution into some of the other areas that had not been affected as far as with seeing the uh, destructive uh, gases blow into that region. So they're going to have to keep up with that and maybe evacuate some different areas now once those winds shift. And you can see those storms only about 30 miles off to the north and west, and they will be moving through in the next 30 minutes or so. Take a live look outside here in El Paso. 48 degrees global hospice. We're not seeing any problems here weather-wise. Colder morning for us this morning. More details on that coming up. And it's Thursday. Your roads are actually looking great at this time. Here's I-10 and for my Buena Vista cam. As you can see, traffic is slowly starting to build. There are no delays, no accidents. Just an earlier accident that they're still trying to clear up on Gateway South Boulevard and Fred Wilson Avenue. That's westbound. Uh, besides that, nothing else on your roads. Right now, at least five people are confirmed dead, but that number could skyrocket following a massive explosion at a fertilizer plant north of Waco, Texas. Parts of the small town of West Texas are said to have been obliterated. The explosion at the West Texas fertilizer plant sent a massive fireball shooting into the sky. Officials say more than 150 people were injured. Witnesses say the blast was so powerful they could feel it miles away. It was on fire. It was a real heavy blaze. And then just all of a sudden, it just exploded and it blew everything within, what, 50, 50 feet, maybe a lot farther than that. Back. The force of the blast leveled dozens of homes and buildings blocks away from the plant, which is located about 18 miles north of Waco. It's horrific. Um, the, some of the things that I've been told, some of the things I've seen are just unbearable. It's, per, it's completely a nightmare. Officials were forced to evacuate the town of about 2,600 people because of concerns that another tank at the fertilizer plant might explode. The town's mayor, who is also a volunteer firefighter, says he's never seen an explosion like this. There was a ball of fire and it went up, looked like a nuclear bomb. You know? Big old, big old mushroom cloud. The U.S. Geological Survey recorded 2.1 magnitude seismic event from the blast. Officials say the destruction is immense. I was there. I walked through the blast area. I searched some houses earlier tonight. Massive, just like Iraq, just like the Murray building in Oklahoma City. And right now, there are about 700 first responders on the ground in West. Just west of the scene is the Rest Haven Nursing Home, which is just a few hundred yards from the plant. Only minutes before the explosion, the facility's medical director raced in and ordered an evacuation. I said get people evacuated to the far side of the building. Luckily, we had most everybody out then. But then uh, they, there was just a major, major explosion. The windows came in on me, the roof came in on me, the ceiling came in. I worked my way out to, to go get some more help. Um, when I got in there, there were some people that were in wheelchairs, and then we had others that um, were just trapped in the rooms. They had sheetrock that was on top of them. You had to remove that. The halls were, had debris in it. The ceilings were down even in the halls, lights. There was a water leak, so you're standing in water. Wires were hanging down. 
Um, we evacuated um, the one wing as fast as I could get them out. Now, officials say more than 130 people live and work at that rest home. How many of them were injured or even killed remains unclear this morning. 504 now investigators could be closing in on the responsible those responsible for the deadly bombing at the Boston Marathon. This as a key piece of evidence surfaces images of two men considered possible suspects are being passed out to law enforcement. Police are sorting through tons of video photos and recovered bomb fragments. Today President Obama plans to attend a service honoring the victims of those explosions. He has also signed an emergency declaration and that will provide federal aid. Time now is 505 as we turn to local news. People in one central El Paso neighborhood are concerned about a proposal to build a new neighborhood Walmart store. The project would tear down one of El Paso's famous fast food chains. KFOX 14 Morning News reporter Ruben Velos live in central El Paso. Ruben. Well, the Chico's Tacos on Montana and Chelsea is closed at this hour, but in the future it could be closed for good. That's because Walmart wants to buy the restaurant's property. City planning officials say the retail giant has expressed interest in building a chain right where the restaurant stands now. The neighborhood market would be built right across from the Albertsons, but before all that could happen, the city needs to rezone four different properties surrounding the location. Some people I spoke with like the idea of new development in the area, but others wouldn't be happy to see the Chico's Tacos go. Looks like an empty, empty area. You know, bringing other stuff in here would make it look a lot better, I think. How do you think people will react? Oh, I don't, I think they'll get mad because they're used to it. A lot of people have been eating the Chico's Tacos for years. And the City Planning Commission will have a hearing for Walmart's zoning request today at 1.30, and that will be held at the downtown main library. Reporting live in central El Paso, Ruben Velos, the KFOX 14 Morning News. Ruben, thank you. Three people vying for a seat on the El Paso ISD Board of Trustees square off at El Paso High School. Omar Villa, Rocio Benedito, and Bob Geske all debated about who was the best suited to represent District 1. Candidates discussed the recent cheating scandal in EPISD and the Weaver audit. We asked each one of the candidates the very same question. Now that the cheating scandal is in the past, how do you plan to move the district forward? We have to learn from the mistakes of the past. We have to take away the temptations that we put in place of the superintendent. We have to remove the incentives that are based on money. With a clean slate, a new board members, completely new slate of board members, I think that gives the district the opportunity to move forward. It, moves, it gives the, the community new confidence in the school board so that it can move forward and it can take on tough new issues putting everything behind us and able to move forward. What I've done already to ensure that our district moves forward is I've just been looking through policies and procedures and structures and, and strengthening the places that need to be strengthening, that need to be strengthened and the places and the things that need to be removed or, or um, uh, eliminated. And remember, those elections are scheduled to take place May 11th. 507 next. The Tucson Padres about to become the El Paso something or others. We don't know yet. Yeah, no name yet. Why the general manager of the AAA baseball team says the move to the Sun City can only benefit the borderland. Brad? And not a good weather, not a good weather day for us weather-wise yesterday. Take a live look outside this morning. Things are cooling down. 47 degrees global hospice. We're gonna have the details on your improving weather and your warmer weekend on the KFOX 14 morning news. It's coverage you can count on.